Now yes, Steve Blair. Today we're going to look at the new Tier 6 Premium British Cruiser, the Cheshire. We got our buddy Bruce on the screen there. That's not a build that's tailor-made to the ship. That's kind of my standard British Cruiser build, which, you know, it's pertains more to the light cruisers. Why I used him over the Azura Lane Belfast Commander, which is kind of my backup uh, cruiser commander for this nation. I normally would put the Belfast Commander on any ship that has the HE. We're talking... Uh, Belfast, London, Exeter, ships of those natures, you know, trying to boost the a HE performance, the fire chance as much as possible, and I don't like flipping my builds back and forth between, or before every game, so usually that's my approach, but because the HEs are already really effective on the Cheshire, we're talking 3,850 damage, uh, best at the tier, 24% fire chance in my build, second best behind the Miyoko, so we're already getting really solid HE performance, but look at the AP damage. 6,210. That's blistering. Next highest is the York at 5,775. So I'm thinking, you know, the AP is where it's at. Let's try and maximize that. That's why I'm running Bruce on this. As we're getting into position here, we'll kind of run down the rest of the stats. 4,000 or 42,500 HP highest at the tier. Uh, range of mine, 14.9. Not that outstanding. 17 second reload that's the one you want to take note of that's buying away the the highest at the tier so that's kind of the balancing factor on the outstanding performance of these guns torpedoes pretty solid we got one launcher per side four tubes uh, per launcher and we got 8.8 .8 kilometer range 61 knots on my build so decent uh performance you can single fire the torps or you have the standard quote-unquote widespread which is a little bit wider than your normal narrow spread for most nations but still it's kind of the equivalent so depending on how you want to attack a ship you can switch back and forth speed 34.8 on my build which is actually pretty solid for the tier uh turn radius a little sluggish 720 8.4 rudder shift again pretty sluggish sea, sea detectability 9.5 that kind of surprised me a little bit now keep in mind we do have macau on this build which is bringing that down a bit but that's still probably right in the wheelhouse of uh, pretty competitive concealment for cruisers. So stats-wise, pretty impressive. And I have enjoyed the ship quite a bit so far. Uh, you know, once again, this is an early impressions video, so I've only played about 10 games or so, just trying to get a feel for the ship. Why I picked this game, you know, I did have a few rippers in terms of damage saved up, but... Been losing a lot of capture the base mode games where we're up multiple ships, and this one was a good example of how to play capture the base. So we're going to be talking about that as the match progresses. Right now we're just trying to play this flank. Now why I moved up here to play this island, a lot of times you can get some pretty good crossfires uh, depending on where these red ships are deploying. Haven't got any juicy opportunities yet, but we're able to kind of halt whatever tendencies that these guys have to push over here and kind of exert control over this eastern flank. So pretty good position. You'll note our blue destroyer here, the Z-23, has been doing a decent job spotting. You know, he's been keeping that Bismarck lit for us. He is getting a little aggressive with his positioning, though, and that's going to wind up costing him. You don't normally want to get that far forward. You don't want to be in the mix of the red ships uh, that far forward, or that early in the game, at least. So that's going to wind up costing him. But at least he's, looks like he's attempting to spot for us anyways. Here we get the New Orleans. We predict he's going to turn, so we immediately flip over to the AP. We're going to get two juicy salvos of AP in this game. They're going to be the next two salvos. So uh, you'll be able to see the performance here. Against broadside cruisers, look out. This thing is extremely dangerous. Um, you know, you're kind of counting on a slow reload to get out of those situations. But I've actually dev struck cruisers with this thing uh, if you hit it just right. So you got to be very careful uh, going against the Cheshire. There we just took a wicked salvo from the Bismarck. That's decent angle, too. So I don't know what the armor schemes on this thing are. You know, I've been angling against cruiser AP with no problems. Battleships, I've been trying to just not get shot with them by with the AP because I'm not getting a lot of success. Anyone who's got this ship on PC or knows what the armor values are, if you want to let us know in the comments so we can get a feel for it. But until the armor view comes along, I'm just kind of, only able to really give you guys how the ship feels. And I haven't played against the Cheshire yet, um, so usually you can get a better read on how the armor performs when you're shooting at it. You can kind of 
see how your shells are performing. But my advice, if you got the ship, kind of treat it like British cruisers where you don't really want to be getting shot by those <laughs> battleships. Uh, there the Z-23 looks like he's trying to suicide torp the Bismarck. You can see he's kind of in between that ship and the destroyer. But we saw the Akatsuki poking all around here. We want to go ahead and get rid of him if possible. Bismarck's looking to kill us. We do want to get that back turret off. We do get the round off there. Pop him. And now we're going to try and push forward aggressively against this Akatsuki. You can see he's making... He's deploying the smoke, which he needs to do. But what he needs to do immediately, as that smoke's deploying, he should be going full speed, turning around, getting away from there. Anytime as a destroyer player... You got any cruiser pushing into you. You need to treat that as basically a life-threatening situation for yourself. So it seems to me he's just kind of sitting in the smoke cloud. He does spot us there due to the smoke fire penalty of our ship. So we do need to be careful that the sonar is deployed and we're kind of taking evasive maneuvers right now because we're assuming that Akatsuki does have his torps reloaded. That's a quick reloading destroyer. And he knows we're pushing into him and he's got it spotted. So expect the torpedoes. We're mainly angled in towards him, but once we get pointed towards him, we're going to juke to the right there. You saw how he pulled just a little bit to the right and then angled back at him. And then we're going to see these. You see the first salvo there. That's where he was aimed when we were kind of going in our first position. Then he held on to the second salvo and the third salvo. Uh, and he shot those at the, you know, the juke that moved to the right. So pretty effective there. You combine that with the sonar and... Basically, he's in deep trouble now. So the better play for the Akatsuki, rather than trying to torp cruisers, which, yes, you can do from time to time, but it's generally not uh, the most effective play. It's hard to do, and especially if they have the sonar up like we did there, you're really going to have a hard time torping them. So get out of there. Pre preserve yourself uh, for later in the match. That could have, you know, if that destroyer wound up living longer, he could have had more success. Might have been able to turn the game. As this Akatsuki goes down, now we evaluate the game. And what do you guys see on the map? What's your play? If your play is, okay, we got a clear shot to the base. Let's go ahead and get on there and cap. That's when you're losing these games. You're going to see we're going to immediately head back towards the base. Now, I don't do as good of a job getting back there as I possibly could have. We're, tr we're still trying to figure out where that destroyer is. In my mind... You know, he's a Yudachi. He might just be sailing around trying to torp battleships instead of trying to win the game. But usually when teams are down, as they are right now, uh, and they do have a destroyer, you got to protect against the fact that he could get on the base, he could win the game. So keep in mind, you know, we do have a King George on our team. He's actually a member of my channel, Mr. Hassas. He's also going back down to defend the base, which is excellent. Normally, though, you know, nine times out of ten... Nobody on your team is even going to consider the possibility of defending the base. You can ping it 500,000 times, and I think we're going to do it about 200,000 times in this game. Not going to matter. They will not respond to that. They don't even consider, you know, the, usually they're not even trying to win the game. We already know that. But understanding that defending your base will protect you from losses that you shouldn't be taking. That should be your primary focus for these capture the base mode games. If you want to understand the flow of the game, you move forward, you clear your flank, then you go back and defend your base. If you do that as a player, you're going to win more uh, capture the baseball games. If you can get other players on your team to do it by uh, help pinging them to get you to help defend the base, and they actually do that, your win rate on capture the base mode is going to go through the roof. How you lose a lot of capture the base mode games is trying to get on the base. So that's Pretty much the reason I picked this game, I wanted to highlight the fact that we had an opportunity to get on the cap. I think a lot of players, that's the tendency. They say, okay, we can get on the cap and we can, you know, win the game that way. Number one, it's not going to work as a cruiser because these guys can go back, spot me very easily, and then blow me up. We've already seen how well this thing does against uh, Battleship AP round. So that's not going to work. Uh, there's another AP cell for... Anyone looking to see how the performance is against battleships, you can see they're a pretty meaty shot, you know, two and a half, three thousand, four thousand, whatever it was. But in my experience, the HE were getting about as much raw damage plus the juicy fires, you know, 24% fire chance. You're getting a lot of fires. So, battleships, 
I'm tending to lean towards the recommendation of just shooting HE at them all the time, but I'm still experimenting with this. I think closer range, the AP gets uh, more and more deadly. Anyway, we've kind of taken a little bit too much time here. Now you can see the Udachi did, in fact, get on the base. What are Udachis doing? I think he's trying to uh, buff his Dewey to a high level. I doubt he's got any hands in control. He is actually going to pick it back up, so he might have gotten disconnected or something and then uh, tried to get back into the game, begun playing, whatever. But we need him to kind of go back to the base, reset it. The only time you can really capture the base effectively and capture the base mode... Let me, let me rephrase that. Often to capture the base and capture the base mode, you need a teammate back here to defend the base and reset them. Okay, let's say... There's one ship left, the Udachi. I get on the base, but nobody's down here to reset the guy. He could, he has just as good of a chance to win, and if he gets on the cap before I do, then obviously he wins 100% of the time. But if you come back down here, you got one person on your team, potentially two people on the team. I would like to see the majority of the team down here defending the base, first and foremost, with maybe one ship trying to capture the base. You know, those are effective combinations because you do not want to lose these games where you're up on ships. You can see we're up two ships here. This is very easily uh, a loss in many capture the base mode situations because most people won't be coming back here to defend the base. You got to have people back here, I guess is the moral of the story. I come back here, our King George comes back here. This is what you want to see. And you're going to see the King George <laughs> rip this Udachi. Oh, man. <laughs> That you do not want to be taking HE shots from the King George in any destroyer. So he could have very easily one-shot that, and it would have been outstanding. In fact, I would have preferred that uh, just to highlight the fact that we got a battleship coming back here to reset a destroyer, and he's ripping him to shreds. But great job there to the King George. The help with that is much appreciated. And now the game's won, okay? Yes, they stopped our accrual of points for a little bit while that Udachi was on here. But we got to really be in hardcore throw mode to lose this one. So that's the moral of the story, guys. I want, that's why I picked this, you know, game. I'm going to keep harping on this point until the scourge of throwing capture the base mode games is eradicated. And since that will never happen, we'll just keep harping on it as long as I'm playing this game. You got to defend your base. Capture the base mode is win your flank, go back, defend the base. Win rate goes up. Anyway, that's a look at the Cheshire for you guys. Hope you did enjoy it. It is a strong ship in my opinion and it'd be a worthy addition to anyone's navy. So if you did like that one, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys. And I'll see you all later. Peace.